One is, of course, giving you congratulations upon clearing the strategic business leader exam with 70 marks. But another one, which is the bigger one that is coming your way, is to congratulate you for becoming an ACCA member because you're straight away becoming a member, right? Many of the students, I can tell you, many of the students, they really struggle to clear the strategic business leader exam in the first, first attempt. And they would really like to know from you in terms of, you know, what has been your strategy, what all you did, the way you did. And of course, how come you have come up with these such flying, flying colors? I know you are a qualified chartered accountant. So why did you choose ACCA uh, as, as a qualification to pursue? In terms of knowing that you know you did your CA and then you started your ACCA. So how much time it took for you to crack all the four exams of ACCA? You had a full-time job at your own hand. So it's not going to be easy, right, for you any which ways. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, my name is Pankaj Chingra. And as you all know me by now, I'm a proud Fintrammer. And guess what? Today... Today, I'm here, my friend, with another success story. Another success story of a Fintrammer who just cleared her strategic business leader exam in first attempt. And guess what? With 70 marks. It's huge, right? It's huge. And guess what? She did that with along with her full-fledged job. And that was the reason I really wanted to invite her to be here to share her journey in terms of you know, what she did the way she did. She also qualified ACCA this time and directly became an ACCA member since she came from the chartered accountancy background. And of course, I've already done the uh, article ship and she has been working. So she effectively got the got the uh, ACCA member status directly. So we really wanted to call her here and congratulate her too. And of course, learn from her in terms of you know what she did, the way she did. I'm talking about my friend, our student named Saras Mota. She, of course, did what she did, and I really wanted her to be here to be talking to you and, of course, sharing with you in terms of what has worked for her in strategic business leader exam and what you should be thinking about. Should we go and check it out? Yes, sir. But before, before we really go in up there, please do subscribe to our channel, Fintram Global, just to ensure that all of these videos are really reaching out to you as they are being made. Should we go and check out what Saras has to share with us? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go and check it out. Hi, Saras. Good afternoon. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon. And I hope you are very much excited, right? Excited to get 70 marks in the strategic business leader exam. How are you feeling? I'm sure it has to be. It has to be like that. By the way, you know, it, it is, you know, one is, of course, giving you congratulations upon clearing the strategic business leader exam with 70 marks. But another one, which is the bigger one that is coming your way is to congratulate you for becoming a, becoming an ACCF. You know, not I'll not say affiliate ACCA member because you're straight away becoming a member, right? Yeah. Congratulations for that, too. Thank you so much. And that is the reason, Saras, you know, I really wanted you to be here because I really wanted to talk on in terms of, you know, how have you done that? Many of the students, I can tell you, many of the students, they really struggle to clear the strategic business leader exam in the first, first attempt. And they would really like to know from you in terms of, you know, what has been your strategy, what all you did, the way you did. And of course, how come you have come up with these such flying, flying colors just to, you know, for them to really understand. So we just thought that we'll reach out to you. We'll talk to you and of course, invite you here to really, of course, you know, discuss all of these things with you. And of course, take that to the folks to the students at large so that they can also understand in terms of what do they really need to do in terms of, you know, clearing the exam with the flying colors. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. No, no, and you know, I, should, I should be thanking you. You should not be thanking us. We should be, you know, thanking you for really, really taking out time and, and being here. Uh, the question that I have for you, Saras, is, and, you know, I'll probably start unlayering the things that I have in my mind is that... Uh, how did you, and of course, we'll get on to strategic business leader, you know, exam in a while. I know you are a qualified chartered accountant. So why did you choose ACCA uh, as, as a qualification to pursue? And of course, how much time it took you to, you know, clear all the exams? I think that is the first thing that students might be interested in, in terms of knowing that, you know, you did your CA and then you started your ACCA. So how much time it took for you to crack all the four exams of ACCA? So uh, actually, I've given seven attempts of paper in which I uh, like there were two attempts in which I had technical default. So 
it got cancelled and then one paper I flunked and rest I passed all in one go. And you did after your chartered accountancy, right? Yeah. And why did you? So my question was, why did you chose ACC? Uh, actually, uh, I had taken off in between uh, my job. So like my family really wanted me to pursue something, be connected to studies. So uh, I was figuring out like, what should I go for? So I just uh, uh, saw that ACCA would provide exemption and then uh, for paper only we have to attempt and then we can have a good degree. So, uh, and it has recognition in 180 countries also. So I decided why not take this opportunity and then use all the exemption and then go for ACCA. So in the organization that you were working and I, mean, I know, you know, you were working in EY. So, you know, in that organization also, they give some kind of recognition to ACCA, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so one of the parameter was again to get bitterly or I would say better recognized in your own organization in terms of, you know, doing this qualification, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And I think I think that's the that is one of the logical way to really approach for this too. And to all the chartered accountancy students, let me tell you this. This is something to really relish and know that ACCA, if you're a qualified chartered accountant, gives you nine exams out of 13 to be exempted. So you only have to give four exams to become a qualified ACCA. And since you've already done your article chip the way, you know, of course, Saras has already done, you know, you effectively get the, you know, the status of ACCA member directly. And to the folks who have, who are doing uh, their chartered accountancy and still not cleared. And of course, they have done their IPCC and still trying to uh, do their uh, uh, finals. And of course, they're not able to, for whatsoever reason, you can also get exemptions. You know, of course, uh, if you, uh, for all the exams wherein you have scored 40 and 40 plus in the CA final exam, all of those exams are also exempted to you. So you can also get, you know, up to nine exams exempted. So do not forget that. And then I think that is one of the reasons many of the chartered accountancy students are not thinking about getting into ACCA. So do not do not undermine that as an opportunity for yourself. Anyway, you know, Saras, this was not something that I really want to talk on, but you, since you mentioned it, the, the, the exemption piece, I just wanted to mention to the students in terms of, you know, how they should be thinking about this. But to you, you know, of course, you chose ACCA, recognized in 180 countries, and of course, you wanted to do something more. You finally got into the ACCA. You said you, you did seven attempts and two went off because, you know, of course, technological issues. And out of five, you cracked four. One, of course, you know, was the struggle, struggle point for you. Which exam it was, Saras? Where in you flunked? Which exam it was? APM. Oh, okay. So you did APM before, before SBL, uh, Saras? Yes. Okay, but you know what we always, uh, and I'm sure you know uh, you by the way, that APM and, and SBL has lot more um, similarity in terms of points. Yes. So we yes, always definitely. say that you know uh, SBL has to be first and then APM because you know uh, by that logic APM really goes easier for you because many of the generic concepts you have already learned in SBL while. Uh, calculation piece is, is more difficult in APM, but at least from the generic standpoint, you've already covered a lot in SPL as far as the APM is concerned. Yeah. But, but I think that. vice versa also worked for me. Yes. No, and it will work, right? Content is the same, right? My, yeah. my only point is doing SBL earlier to APM helps from the generic uh, content standpoint uh, because then practical component is something that you need to learn more in APM. And why, if you do APM first, then also it helps because you have covered, you know, at least 30% of the content that you would read in SBL. So it, it helps vice versa. Maybe my I, I'm more good in uh, uh, theory subjects. So I, I, I more call out that, you know, give SBL first and then move to, you know, APM. But, you know, you're right. You know, it, it helps vice versa too. You know, and, and bang on. So, uh, Saras, you know, you... Uh, you finally landed up doing, you know, SBL and of course SBL with us. So how, how has been your journey? With SBL? You know, I think that's, that's something, you know, people will be very much interested in, in terms of, you know, how much time it took you to complete your SBL. 
uh it was great like i was uh, searching for classes and then through youtube i got your reference and uh, like when i saw your content it was like since you have had a lot of experience yourself so it was really uh, i was very uh, amazed to you know have something very uh, nice on my way to sbl uh, then uh, i uh, took classes and then uh, with classes uh, i studied and uh, like it was a regular study starting off and then uh, the most important thing about the classes were the revision classes that helped me you know correlate everything into the syllabus and uh, uh, like uh, after like the revision classes you have those technical uh, articles session uh, also so like uh, if we go by the website of acca so uh, we, we would get lost uh, with technical articles which one is new which one is upcoming so the uh, advice like th these are trending like these are the new ones and you should uh, go about it like read those a uh, focus on those so it was really helpful and since the uh, like uh, duration is also like very uh, apt like 30 minutes 25 minutes technical articles you can just have it on the go like even if you are working you can have it on your earphone and then you can listen to it and then it goes into your subconscious and how it works that way it really it it was amazing and it really helped me out and how much time it took you as in to complete the entire content you know and of course give exam and I'm, I'm sure you know you're you had a full time job at your own hand so it's not going to be easy right for you any which ways uh like i used to study uh, in the morning uh, two hours daily so around 50, uh, 100 hours of those lectures and uh, like i would uh, repeatedly listen to the classes even if i could not uh, make out time for study so i would repeatedly uh, go on listening to the classes uh, watch videos twice thrice so 100 hours of uh, listening to the videos watching that content, uh, content and like studies effectively since i had my apm done and uh, like all those papers i had practiced on pra uh, practice platform so it really helped me to you know figure out things and sbl is more of like everything Uh, falls into one subject so uh, to correlate and to do everything so like attempting three papers before sbl really helped me out and then like 10 days of focus study i would say and then most important thing is to practice papers if you do not practice papers you are definitely going to flunk so i had this in mind that three papers at least before uh, exams i need to practice and i did that and no no denial on that and, and and you know you would have seen that i i speak like you know like a broken record over here that you have to practice questions practice at least two to three past exam questions by your own hand in order to really have a grasp on it and that's what we also provide in our revision boot camp because in revision boot camp we have practiced a lot of past examination questions also giving you all the tips and tricks that you really need in terms of you know excelling in the exam and you're you know bang on sir as i think what is very important is that you should certainly practice those those uh, exam standard questions or past exam questions just to ensure that you know you're not missing on in terms of you know how the exam would be when you would face over there and sbl exam is not a plain <coughs> one exam we you know which we are very much used to you know it's a very different exam because it will give you one day study and too many exhibits and you know questions being asked from anywhere from any concept and many of those concepts are real common sensical ones you know wherein you really have to apply your uh, acumen over there and of course answer it there and then so you know you're you know, you're really bang on onto that you mentioned the time table also right 2 to 3 hours a day so uh, effectively in let's say 60 to 90 days is the time that you would have taken 2 hours a day kind of a thing you completed all the lectures then the revisions then practice the questions by your own hand what about mock exam you know how many mock you gave mock i couldn't give because of my uh, job schedule i i really wanted to but i couldn't but then yeah like since i had attempted mock exams of past papers uh, so that helped me plus i want to add uh, something that you had uh, you gave us the excel like how to proceed with the exam uh, sort of that video so how to go about it how you how you should approach the exam when you have the question paper how how 
you should go about the exhibits. So that uh, really helped me out. So when I started off with my paper on the exam day, I, I just had that thing in mind. And then I uh, like I just uh, like they were asking for report and briefing paper. So I had all the format ready for the initial 20, 25 minutes for every question I was getting that ready. So that when I get into the question, I do not have to worry about, oh my God, I, you know, just uh, uh, did something else. If there was a report, I uh, I started off with something else. So uh, as you said that, uh, you know, follow exhibit and uh, jot down everything, have your format ready. So that really helped me out. That video was actually, actually very helpful. Raft P is something that, you know, I always say is the raft that you would sail you out of the sea of SBL because... You know, those are the areas which which you really have to have in your mind while you're reading the exhibits. And of course, when you read it, you know, you collate that information and then you know what to really extract out from an exhibit, from the content and write it to the answer. And, and, and I, you're really bang on the, onto that. But I'm I'm really happy, uh, Saras, that, you know, at least those things really helped you in terms of having the overall control on the exam. While I do feel that, you know, giving mock exam can really bring fortune to many of your students and i can tell you students who do you know all those who are listening to this you know very important piece is that you should not forget that you have to really understand the overall uh, uh, you know overall exam uh, structure overall exam content and for that when you'll practice few of the exams past exams yourself and give couple of mock exams i think that will really make you uh, very confident in the exam so, sir, when you entered into, you know, you know, into the exam room, now there is no exam room, you give exam from your home only. When you opened the exam and, of course, you got into it and, of course, you saw the case study, how confident you were in terms of, see, you know, seeing that and, of course, having the control over the exhibit, how confident you felt yourself? Uh, 100%, I would say. Oh, nice. because you know uh, yeah because uh, i had all those format ready i knew what i had to do and since revision lectures i had heard like two to three times so it really helped me like uh, uh like uh based on concepts so i know i have that concept in mind so i just have to apply that so uh like 100 percent confident i was because of like practice and uh uh, the revision uh, things and uh, one more thing I would like to add is like for SBL paper just don't worry too much just go and give your best shot very true and I you know the reason <coughs> as I always say that this exam is the most commonsensical exam because at times this exam doesn't really test you on any model it really tests you what you would do in that kind of a scenario being the leader of an organization and for that, you don't need any, you know, at times you don't need any background. You only need the commonsensical approach in yourself as to what you would do that point in time. And if you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, then you're missing on it. And that is what, you know, I think you're, you're right that, you know, you just go with the confidence because you know a lot of content. You just go over there and try answering that to the best extent possible and sky is the limit and God will take care of everything. That's what, you know, you should be thinking. And I, I completely agree on that. One, you know, while you were 100% confident, you know, let me ask it otherwise. What was one hurdle, if there was any, that you felt in this exam? Was there any hurdle that you felt in this exam or any anything that you think was, was an issue for you that you somewhat want student to know that, you know what, you'll be facing this, beware. Uh, actually, since it uh, like it's a commonsensical exam, so you don't really know what what will come your way. So you have to be prepared for everything. And uh, since we have very limited time, so we cannot put our head everywhere. So just be focused and like follow your teacher. Teacher is your best guide. So just don't uh, you know uh, think too much here and there. Just follow your teacher. Uh, it uh, you will sail through. So there was no hurdle that means there was no hurdle. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, like uh, you focus <laughs> on your teacher and you have no hurdles. So I'm I'm taking that as a compliment now. Yes, yes, definitely, <laughs> sir. Okay, so now, you know, and, and thanks for that. Coming on to one other thing that I had in my mind was on the time management. You know, we recently had a webinar also. You know, for the students who were not you know able to clear SPL, we had a detailed heart-to-heart -heart chat with them. 
And one of the points that came up was that you know, they were not able to complete their exam within like you know the time frame. So uh, did you complete your exam? 100% yeah. of it? Okay. Yeah, 50, uh, like 59 seconds before my timer went off. Okay, very nice. So you effectively managed to complete it all. But tell me, you know, what kind of time management technique that you would want to share with the students that helped you in terms of clearing this? And of course, you know, then I can really add on from my side in terms of what I feel would help them. So when I was practicing past exam questions, uh, so uh, we have marks and we have this four hour time with us. So I divided it with minutes. So one point uh, whatever minutes. So with marks you do and then it uh, uh, 60% you uh, of that mark you keep aside for your uh, writing and 40% for reading time. And uh, like uh, if I have to complete a paper in four hours, so I tried doing that in 3.5 hours. So, you know, uh, because on the exam day, uh, we don't know what is going to, you know, be in our mind and how are we going to manage. So, fifth, uh, like we should be like uh, half an hour uh, in our hand. We should have that. So, 3.5 hours. In 3.5 hours, I used to practice and then I know that, you know, it will go to four hours in my exam, on my exam day. So that is how like managing it with marks and then uh, having my timer. So when you practice twice or thrice, you know, it gets into you that, uh, you know, for this much marks, you will have to have uh, this much time on your uh, this thing. So if it exceeds, you uh, go to another question. Stop then, then and there. I agree. And, you know, uh, <coughs> we discuss time management in our session. So as you may be knowing that, you know, we talk extensively on you know how much time you should be spending on each minute uh, each question and how much you should write and how many lines you should be writing for each marks and of course we also talk on how much time you should be spending on reading and reading is a big time skill in this exam you know mm -hmm. completing the entire reading of the exam in 45 minutes to one hour of time frame is important mm -hmm. and reading has to be such that you know you have read it and you don't need to read the content again and again and again and again I think that is because you will be reading again and again, con you know, content again and again, you're effectively losing out time. And that is something that you would struggle towards the end. So if you have really taken care of, you know, the entire content from the standpoint of knowing it and of course, answering it in the best possible way, you've read it rightly, you know, it becomes a hell lot easier for you to really answer that in the respective time frame. And of course, there are some discussions that have to happen in terms of how many uh, minutes you should be spending per mark, how many lines you have to write in, in for every mark. We have discussed all of that in our sessions and you, know, you really have to have a complete hang of it when you're dealing with that in the exam. The more you'll practice that, as Sarah said, in your mock exams, having timer in front of you, the more equipped you are in terms of handling that in the exam conditions, because that is where you, know, you have to show your skill for. And of course, if you're prepared for it, I'm sure sky's the limit there. So I think, you know, Saras, you rightly answered that. That's that's important. Uh, what else? I think towards the end, I, you know, if there is one advice that Saras would give to any aspirant who's giving the ESBIL exam, then what would be that advice, Saras? Uh, my advice would be like if you are working somewhere and like your practical experience really helps you out. So like you don't get it uh, uh, like in direct ways. In direct ways, it's going to help you out. Like how are uh, your leaders managing things uh, in the organization? So keep a check on that and be disciplined, focused like two hours a day. Not more than that. You don't need more than that and practice exam questions, mock papers, and like everything is sorted then for I, ACCA. I couldn't agree more. And Saras, you should start teaching. Let me tell you that. You know, you have really covered it very well in terms of the, in terms of what um, they should be doing. And of course, what they should be really capturing, you know, having focus and having the right rigor. And of course, discipline in terms of spending two hours a day is going to be a game changer. That's really there. But the things that you really need to ensure is that, you're understanding the whole content and you're applying to the questions in the in the best possible way that can only come to you naturally the more you'll practice the questions. So understanding how the exam looks like, practicing a practicing few of the exam questions, and of course, you know, really ensuring that you're not missing on what examiner really needs. That is what you really need. And as far as I think you 
you really uh, covered it covered it very well so i think that was broadly you know sarah that i i had in my mind that i wanted to cover you know i'm sure your job at ey which which role you are at you know ey which what kind of role you manage senior as an i'm a audit, senior right? In assurance senior oh assurance so you know i'm sure you know the kind of <laughs> things that you have seen in the workplace also helps because you rightly said those things are not directly asked in the exam but indirectly you know many of the things are real life scenarios or the practical scenarios that you're dealing with on on day to day basis but that doesn't mean student that if you're not working you would not understand that we cover in our sessions all of those scenarios in our discussions so when we talk on various sessions we talk on various concepts we have taken the practical aspects on to the consideration while talking to you on to the on to the real life examples that we discuss with you so do not get worried even if you're not working you can still be the proud friend hammer like what saras became this time i think thank you very much saras that's what i really wanted of course you know coming from the horse's mouth and of course coming from the saras's mouth is is was going to be the game changer so i really wanted you to be here uh you know to to, re to really interact and talk and of course share the things with the students at large so that they can really know in terms of you know you know how and what should i be doing in terms of clearing this exam in the best possible way but very happy for you saras you really made me proud the entire fintram proud in terms of you know achieving what you achieved we really want to congratulate you from the you know on the behalf of entire fintram team and certainly my coffee is due now right we will be certainly yeah. having a cup of coffee whenever you are here in delhi or i am there in uh, which part of uh, country you are kolkata from? kolkata so you know if i am there in kolkata then we'll certainly certainly touch base and have a cup of coffee there sure sir thank you very much sir for taking taking our time we'll see you again and we will be bothering you for many such sessions do not forget that thank you very much thank you so much thank you so